All right, so we've seen some absolutely mental shit go down lately with the whole BLM movement reaching peak heights of retardation. People are getting slammed for controversial things they said like a thousand fucking years ago. Shows are getting cancelled for the most innocent jokes, most of them from bygone eras. And cartoon police dogs are getting put down as a preemptive attempt not to upset kids. But this next level of censorship is a whole new level of batshit crazy. Food. That's right, you heard me. Food is now problematic. And companies are in damage control mode. To avoid the negative PR that comes when whiny bitch race activists latch onto a target to tear down wrong think, we'll get into all of that right after this sponsor. With a lot of the world's workforce now based at home, VPN security is an absolute must. And in terms of functionality and value for money, it's hard to look past Virtual Shield. You can encrypt all your browsing activity, protect your personal data, and even change your location. Check this out. What's my IP.com? Bang. So here's my current IP address that indicates I'm located in Sydney, Australia. I'll open Virtual Shield and change my location to Germany. Hit refresh, and now I've got a new IP address that indicates I'm located in Frankfurt, Germany. Virtual Shield is one of the fastest and most user-friendly VPNs on the market, and they offer a money-back guarantee to back it up. Due to the recent Koof Koof pandemic, Virtual Shield is offering 50% off all VPN plans and all premium add-ons, including Protection Plus, Residential Access, and VIP Performance Plans for as little as a cup of coffee. Sign up for a free 30-day trial to Virtual Shield VPN and see what all the hype is about. You've got nothing to lose. One food company shining the bitch beacon more brightly than others is ice cream producer Ben & Jerry's. With their ever popular flavours related to social justice, such as Justice Remixed, which highlights criminal justice reform, and the anti-Trump flavour Pecan Resist, BJ's knows exactly how to blow away bigotry with a shotload of cream to the mouth. Ben & Jerry's calls on Americans to combat white supremacy in a blistering statement building on its multi-year campaign against racial inequality. Combat white supremacy with fucking ice cream. Okay. This week, Ben and Jerry's offered four concrete steps to dismantle white supremacy in all its forms. It called on President Trump and elected officials to begin a formal process of reconciliation, including asking Trump to disavow white supremacists. It voiced support for HR 40. Ben and Jerry's asked for the creation of a national task force to end racial violence and increase police accountability, and called on the Department of Justice to use its civil rights division to defend black and brown people. But most importantly, buy our ice cream because we are such good people. But seriously, I wonder which way they think racial violence leans in America. Are more white people committing violence against black and brown people? Or are more black and brown people committing violence against white people? Will this proposed task force concentrate on all racial violence? Or just some racial violence? Unless and until America is willing to collectively acknowledge its privilege, take responsibility for its past and the impact it has on the present, and to commit creating a future steeped in justice, the list of names that George Floyd has been added to will never end, the statement said. Take responsibility for the past? Didn't the North of America fight a fucking civil war to free the slaves? Didn't hundreds of thousands of people die to free the slaves? How is that not taking responsibility for the past? Anyway, it seems a lot of food companies are taking Ben and Jerry's lead. Eskimo Pie has realised their own name is problematic towards combating racism and highly offensive to Eskimos, or Inuits, or whatever the fuck they're called. Elizabeth Marquez, a spokesperson for Dryer's Ice Cream, said in a statement to USA Today that the company has been reviewing our Eskimo pie business for some time and will be changing the brand name and marketing. We are committed to being part of the solution on racial equality and recognise the term is derogatory, Marquez said. This move is part of a larger review to ensure our company and brands reflect our people's values. Bullshit you want to be part of the solution on racial equality. You're just a business that's shit scared you're going to lose money if you don't bend the knee and pander to the social justice bitch squad. But what you don't realise is the social justice bitch squad is like 1% of the population. They're just extremely loud on Twitter. I mean, did any actual Eskimo say anything about this? See, nobody eats an ice cream while thinking, gee, I wonder if I'm doing my part to combat inequality and racism towards Eskimos. They're thinking, fuck, this tastes really good. Like in Australia, we've got an 
ice cream called a gay time. And I love a good gay time in my mouth, because it tastes good. That doesn't mean I'm thinking, fuck the gays, I'm going to appropriate their gayness. There's no politics in my choice of ice cream. Other popular American brands that are making changes include Aunt Jemima's syrup and pancake mix, Uncle Ben's rice, Mrs. Butterworth's and cream of wheat. Some associate the shape of bottles of Mrs. Butterworth's syrup with the mammy, a racial caricature of a black woman rooted in the history of slavery in the United States. Cream of wheat has long been criticised for the use of a grinning black chef on its packaging since the 1890s. The mascot on early boxes was known as Rastus, a caricature of a jolly former slave often featured in minstrel shows. David Pilgrim, the director and founder of the Jim Crow Museum of Racist Memorabilia at Ferris State University in Big Rapids, Michigan, said he was pleasantly surprised by the announcements, which he called powerful, symbolic gestures. One of the things these all share is the idea of reducing black people to happy servants, whose greatest joy in life is to serve white people, Pilgrim said. When we reduce people to that one dimension, it both shapes and reflects attitudes that people have about black people. But it's not just black people on packaging that seems to be controversial. As mentioned before, Eskimo pie is offensive to Eskimos. Chiquita Bananas will remove their sexy mascot as it perpetuates stereotypes of sexualized and exotic Latin American women. Seriously? I mean, isn't it a compliment to think of your women as sexy and beautiful? And Land of Lakes Butter will remove the Native American Indian mascot because it's definitely more PC to remove one more Indian from the land of lakes. Good one. You gotta be some type of retarded. <laughs> Fuck you. Even in Australia, Native American Indians are being forced out. Classic Australian lollies, Redskins and Chicos. Chicos? Chico... Chico's? are set to be renamed so they don't marginalise consumers, Allens has announced. The decision was made by the brand's parent company, Nestle, because a redskin is a slang term for Native Americans in the US, where it is considered offensive, while Chico, which is Spanish for boy, is also used in a derogatory way. The decision acknowledges the need to ensure that nothing we do marginalises our friends, neighbours and colleagues, the company said in a statement. It's fucking Australia. How many Native Americans Americans and Latinos are going to be insulted by this in Australia. Alright, now here's the Coco Pop section. This is dear to my heart. If you thought breakfast cereals were safe, get a load of this. Coco Pop's racism row. Former MP says breakfast cereal is racist. A number of brands have been thrust into the spotlight for racial insensitivity this week. And now the breakfast cereal has been forced to respond. Cereal giant Kellogg's has been accused of racism by a former MP in Britain who has questioned why its popular breakfast treat Coco Pops is promoted with a monkey, while its white-coloured stablemate Rice Krispies has three fair-skinned characters splashed on its box. Um, maybe it's because monkeys are brown and not white? What the fuck does that have to do with black people? I mean, to insert some implication of race in that means you are a fucking racist. Monkeys are brown! Fuck me! I mean, I'm brown. Like, this iteration of me you're seeing on your YouTube screen is brown. Does that make me racist? It probably does, actually, according to these fuckwits. Oh, my God, this is so tedious. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sick of this. Yeah, so there you have it. In this climate of outrage culture, you've got to wonder what other brands will come under the firing line of the PC Brigade. We've got a brand of cheese here called Coon Cheese, named after the work of an American, Edward William Coon, who patented a unique ripening process that was used to manufacture the original Coon Cheese. But something tells me Coon isn't far away from the chopping block. Pardon the cheesy pun. Anyway, that's it from me. I'll catch you next time. Bye, cunts. Session, session, session. Give me better ties, give me better